What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying your lives to the fullest today. Today we are reviewing the 2023 Lincoln Aviator Grand Touring. Huge thank you to Thomas Proctor over at Ted Britt Lincoln of Chantilly, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Aviator Grand Touring or any Lincoln product, I'll be sure to have Thomas's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. First, we're gonna talk about the exterior and performance. And one of the first things I wanted to say right off the bat is that this is the Grand Touring with the Grand Touring One package. So there are gonna be some features that I point out um, that come with the Grand Touring One package. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. But let's just jump right into the exterior and performance. So like I said, this is a 2023 Lincoln Aviator Grand Touring. And this particular one has been painted in the $750 pristine white metallic paint, which looks absolutely phenomenal on a sunny day unfortunately we're uh, here on a gloomy day reviewing the Grand Touring but we're gonna start over here at our headlights so we do get LED headlights with automatic high beams as well as LED daytime running lights LED turn signals and with the optional $2,100 illumination package you guys can get the adaptive pixel LED headlights with dynamic bending as well as LED fog lights which would be located down here and you would also get the illuminated Lincoln badge this particular one does not have that uh, but you guys still do get the LED headlights so right here this is your LED daytime running light strip obviously these are your LED headlights and then this is your LED turn signal just I wanted to point those things out um, so you guys knew exactly what was going on with your lighting up front but with the Grand Touring, you guys do get a bright chrome front grille with a chrome grille surround. This is the Grand Touring specific grille, and then you guys can see the Lincoln logo at the center of the grille. You guys can see at the back of the Lincoln logo, you kind of have some blue backing. That is to signify the Grand Touring. So if you guys got, let's say, the Reserve or the Black Label, you guys would not have that blue. Again, if you guys got the Black Label Grand Touring, I believe this would still be blue. So the blue, again, signifies signifies that this is a hybrid. Now, just below your Lincoln logo is where you'll find your forward-facing camera. That forward-facing camera goes along with your 360-degree view camera system that comes standard on the Grand Touring. Now, like I mentioned to you guys earlier on in the video, this does have the $5,840 Grand Touring One package, which gives you guys these front slash side sensors. So you get six sensors up here total. So you get one, two, three, four, five, and six. Again, that comes with the Grand Touring One package. And then towards the bottom of the front bumper, you guys do get a gloss black lower grille that flares up on both sides. So you guys can see this is all gloss black and then it, boom, flares up and in. And then on this side, it does the same exact thing. And then up here, you guys can see you have a chrome strip. Same thing goes for that side as well, um, separating the black from the top and the bottom. And then the lower front fascia, obviously you guys can see is body color. And if you guys were wondering about ground clearance, you guys get 8.3 inches of ground clearance with the Aviator Grand Touring. Working our way down the side, this is a side marker light as well as a reflector. So right here is where you'll find your side marker light and then the rest of this kind of reflects that light but it's also a reflector itself you guys do get body color wheel arch moldings as well as body color rocker moldings which i'll show you guys um, when we move down there but i do want to talk about the suspension first so standard you guys do get an adaptive suspension that changes dependent on which driving mode you are in however if that is not enough for you guys you guys can get the optional twenty four hundred dollar dynamic handling package which is basically what lincoln calls it air glide suspension so it's basically an air ride suspension lincoln calls it air glide so again you get an adaptive suspension standard with the grand touring but if that's not enough, you guys can get an air ride suspension for another $2,400. Um, one thing I did me uh, didn't mention, but I'm going to mention now, is that you guys do get heated Visoblade wipers, and these wipers are also rain sensing. But back down to here, I feel like I'm all jumping all over the place. But with the GT, you guys do get these 21-inch machine face with gray pocket wheels wrapped in 275-45 Pirelli Scorpion Zero all-season tires. Give you guys a view of the tread pattern on those tires as best as I can. That is what they look like. That's a better look at your front wheel and tire setup. Like I mentioned, this is the Grand Touring, which Grand Touring basically signifies that this is a hybrid vehicle. 
So obviously with the hybrid, you guys do get a charge port. So let's open up our body color charge port. Opening that up, I believe all of that is illuminated. Yes, it is. And this charge port does support level two charging, um, which it might not look like it, but it does come with an adapter. Just thought I would point that out. And that is what your charge port looks like. Closing that back up and working our way up. You guys can see that you guys do get a black fender and a black door badge. It kind of works together. It's kind of like one continuous piece and it is all black. And then your aviator lettering is blue again to signify that this is a hybrid. So the lettering itself, I'm not sure if the GoPro is gonna pick it up, but now it is. Um, you guys can see that that is blue and that matches your front Lincoln logo. Again, just to signify that this is the hybrid aviator, not just the gas fair of the aviator but working our way over to here you guys do get black mirror caps with integrated led turn signals these side view mirrors are power folding they're heated the driver side mirror is auto dimming they do have memory functions so when you guys set your driver memory seat adjustment settings not only does it memorize your seat setting but it also memorizes your side view mirror settings which is very very nice and then you get blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and over there on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror and then at the bottom not only do you get a camera so right here is your camera that works with your 360 degree view camera system that comes standard on the grand touring you also get a puddle light again so if you guys are walking up to this vehicle at night it just gives you a nice little illumination pad right where you guys are going to step into the vehicle which again in my opinion is very very nice but Let's do a little side profile of the Aviator Grand Touring. I think this thing looks great. It kind of gives me Range Rover vibes a little bit just in the design. I don't know. Let me know if you guys agree with that in the comments down below or if you guys kind of see the same thing. I'm going to wait for this plane to go by. All right, I might want to work through this video fast because that's the first plane, so I'm kind of worried that more planes are going to be coming. So at the top of the roof line, you guys do get these aluminum roof rails. They look really, really sweet in collaboration with your chrome window window trim uh, Lincoln calls it bright then you do get body color door handles with illumination and keyless access so if you guys walk up to the vehicle at night there's going to be a little light back here that's going to shine just to make it a little bit easier to you know open up the door or find the door handle again at night and uh, like I mentioned that does come also with keyless access and then towards the bottom you do get black door spears and some rocker cladding again that is body color and uh, it matches the black door spears very very nicely again wheel arch moldings back here are also body color you do get a capless filler neck just behind your fuel door okay I guess you guys do have to go through the interior to pop open that door so I'm gonna press that button right there the door is gonna open and you do get a capless filler neck just like I was telling you guys you get a body color shark fin antenna you get a body color roof spoiler as well with your integrated third brake light located right here you guys are not gonna be able to see it at the moment with the GoPro's lighting you also do get a top mounted wiper so your wiper does hide up in here um, so basically where my fingertips are that is where you'll find your rear wiper you guys also do get some chrome Lincoln lettering back here you get LED taillights and you also get an LED taillight bar that connects the two taillights together which in my opinion looks absolutely sick and then just below your C right here is where you'll find your backup camera. Again, that backup camera works with your 360 degree view camera system. This also does have a power and hands-free lift gate. However, this one does get a credit for not having the hands-free lift gate, again, on this particular model. If you come over here, just between your O and your L, and you press that button, the power lift gate will open up. The planes are starting to fly through here, which is unfortunate. So with that trunk, opened up this particular aviator does have the optional $200 rubber floor mats as well as the $130 cargo area protector which is this thing right here a couple other things back here you get a 12 volt power outlet you guys can power fold up and down the third row seats which is very very nice so if you press this button right here both of the third row seats will fold down simultaneously so I'll show you guys the button that I'm pressing this is the button that I'm pressing and they both fold up or down simultaneously again with that button. If you guys wanna do that individually, you have the 3L and the 3R. So I'm gonna press the 3R and then the right side will come up by itself. So again, you can do them simultaneously or you can do them individually. Uh, it's just up to you and what you want to do. But you also get a little light over there. You got a grocery bag holder right here. You get another one on this side about right there. And then if you guys open this up, you get a little bit more storage space under here. 
I believe what comes in here are like your charging accessories and then you do have your regular floor mats and then underneath everything, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to open it up just with one hand, but that is where you will find your spare tire. So underneath all of this stuff, uh, again, is where you will find your spare tire. I'm gonna move all that stuff back to where it was so the trunk can close again. Um, pressing on this button right here, I believe will lock the vehicle and then you can also close the power lift gate by the push of that button there. Again, with the Grand Touring 1, you guys do get six backup sensors back here. So you get one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then underneath your like trunk area, you will have this black trim piece with reflectors on either side. So you get a reflector on this side with a side marker light and a reflector on this side also with a side marker light and then let's do a little back or booty shot of the aviator because this thing has a really nice rear end to it in my opinion the aviator grand touring also does come with a quad tip exhaust you guys can see you do get a body color rear valence back here this particular aviator has also been optioned with the 500 dollars class 4 trailer tow package which gives you guys seven and four pin connectors as well as everything else displayed on screen if you guys were wondering about the max tow capacity of the Aviator Grand Touring, it is 5,600 pounds, which is pretty dang respectable for, you know, a vehicle that is, you know, not really built for towing and more built for hauling around your family while also getting very good fuel economy. So I think that tow capacity is actually pretty respectable considering that this is a hybrid vehicle that can tow around, you know, seven people. Let me know what you guys think of the Aviator on the exterior in the comments down below, but let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals that three liter twin turbo V6 that works with an electric motor and a 13.6 kilowatt hour battery to produce 494 horsepower and 630 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 5.4 seconds. If you guys were wondering about fuel economy between the gas powered motor and the electric motor, you guys can see 56 MPGE combined. If you guys are just using the gas powered engine, you guys can look at 24 MPG combined. Again, these are with all wheel drive. And then if you guys were wondering about what you guys can get with pure electric range, you can do 21 miles again on pure electric range. But if you guys are enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm really trying to hit 10,000 subscribers and I cannot do that without your guys' help. We are literally less than like 700, I believe now, away from 10,000, which is crazy by the way. Thank you to each and every one of my current subscribers. But if you guys are enjoying the video, again, please give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. But let's move into the interior. Moving into the interior, like I mentioned to you guys earlier on in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. You can lock the vehicle by pressing on this button right here that looks like a lock and the vehicle will lock. You can tell the vehicle locks because the side view mirrors fold in. Not only can you get into the vehicle by putting your hand behind the door handle, you can also get into the vehicle by remembering your code, typing in your code, and that will also let you into the vehicle. Obviously, you can also get into the vehicle with the buttons on the key fob as well. However, with the Grand Touring One package, you guys can also use your phone as a key, which is really, really cool. If you guys don't get the grand touring one package you cannot use your phone as a key so let's step into the interior so before we step into the interior i do want to show you guys the remote start function so all you got to do is lock the vehicle press this button twice and the vehicle will turn on but because this is a hybrid you guys can kind of hear it it is on at the moment but the gas powered engine did not turn on you guys can also power open and or close the lift gate by pressing on that button there but let's step into the interior and let's see what the interior is all about so the interior color code on this is called sandstone and uh, it looks really really cool it's basically like a dark or light brownish kind of leather with some darker brown it looks really really sweet and i can kind of compare this to like the cappuccino color that they call the Lincoln MKZ or they used to call the Lincoln MKZ's interior that looked very similar to this. So taking a look at the driver's side door panel, all of this sandstone leather is all real leather. And then up top here is all vinyl wrapped. And then from here down is all that brown plastic. 
right here you have your power seat controls you get three memory seat adjustment settings this is for your lumbar on screen so you can pull up your lumbar stuff on screen you get your revel speaker surround unlock and your lock buttons pressing on this button will power fold in your side view mirrors that will restrict your passenger window privileges here are your power side view mirror controls you get automatic up and down windows at all four corners like i said this is all leather wrapped it's nicely padded and you get some accent colored stitching pressing on this button is actually how you open up the door so if you press that button the hinge will unlock and then you can push open the door however let's say you know you get stuck in your car your battery dies or something like that you also do have a backup down here that all you gotta do is pull on and then it opens up just like a regular door handle so you do have a backup to your electric door which is very very nice and also very very important in my opinion so very good amount of storage space down in here you get a great spot you can set a water bottle and then you get some more miscellaneous storage space uh, up at the front of the door panel you do get a brushed aluminum and illuminated door sill so you guys can see the lincoln lettering is illuminated this is what your seats look like no these are not the perfect position seats but these seats are still super super comfortable in and of themselves and i also think that they look pretty sweet as well one of my favorite things about you know, like vehicles that do this lincoln's subarus do this uh, and a couple other like fords uh, look at these seats see how the headrest comes forward that is such a nice feature for a long road trip you have one two three four five six levels of adjustability with that headrest which is very very nice so we're stepping into the interior before that next plane comes uh, so like i said you do get keyless access all you gotta do is have your key fob in the interior push your foot on the brake and push to start and then you get full access to your digital gauge cluster and your infotainment screen so that is what it looks like when every time you get in the aviator you get that fancy looking screen that comes on so we're going to start over here then we'll work our way to this side and then we're going to work our way in to those rear seats so hang on with me guys uh, we'll get this knocked out quick so up top here you get some wood trim you get some leather wrapping you get an hvac vent that is to open and or close your power lift gate that is to open up your fuel door this is to dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons this is to brighten your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons here are your headlight controls so that's headlights off daytime running lights on that is headlights and automatic and then that is headlights always on working our way to the steering wheel you do get a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel it's very very nice um, especially you know something to be expected in my opinion on a vehicle like this and it's nice that it does have it let's take a listen to the turn signals that is what the turn signal sounds like in the 2023 aviator pressing on this button on the end of the turn signal stock will turn your lane keep assist on or off and obviously this also is your high beam control stock this is your windshield wiper control stock not only for your front windshield wipers but also your rear wiper this is what your steering wheel looks like in and of itself it's very very nice it's kind of like a two-tone type of design with like that darker brown leather and then you get that lighter brown leather it looks very very premium and also just feels very very nice that's one thing about lincoln's is that their steering wheels feel ultra ultra premium you get some accent colored stitching on the inside of the steering wheel and this is very awesome and something that lincoln paid very close attention to is look at the stitching so the stitching on the lighter part of the brown is like a lighter stitch and the stitching on the darker brown leather is like a darker brown um, that is very that's paying very close attention to detail so you guys can see the stitching here that stitching is like the same on like the inside of the steering like this side of the steering wheel is the same color I don't know I don't know if that made sense to you guys but that is like paying attention to detail. So Lincoln, great, great job. I paid attention to that. I saw the work that you guys put in. This is your downshift paddle. This is your upshift paddle. Let's take a listen to the horn. That is what your horn sounds like in the aviator. Here are your volume controls. So this is to volume up. This is to volume down. This is to go back on a track. This is to go forward on a track. And then if I turn this button, watch what happens with these buttons down here. Boom, all these lights turn on. So these are to control your adaptive cruise control system that come with the Grand Touring One. So Grand Touring One includes the Lincoln Co-Pilot 361.5 Plus, which gives you guys adaptive cruise control. So these are your adaptive cruise control settings. Pressing that button and they go away. That's on, that's off. And then moving over to here, these buttons 
are to control your digital gauge cluster. So you do get a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster with the Grand Touring um, and it looks very, very nice. And it's very simplistic, which is something that I personally appreciate. So we're gonna go throughout the screen and then I'll mess with these buttons here. So going throughout the screen, you got your digital speedometer readout. That is your compass. That's your coolant temperature gauge. That is your fuel gauge. That is your battery range. So we have 12 miles until the battery is uh, depleted. That is your fuel range again. And then you can see the gas pump is pointing to the left-hand side of the vehicle. That means you fill the vehicle up with gas on the driver's side. If that little arrow down there was pointing to the right-hand side, that means you would fill the vehicle up on the passenger side of the vehicle. And then you guys have your transmission stuff down here. So it's letting us know that we are in park. Again, to go throughout this screen, you have these buttons here. So if I press this button, that will control the screen. So now that's our trip one information. Now this is our fuel economy stuff. Pressing that button again, tire pressure stuff. And then that brings us back into our calm screen. So see this button here? Watch what happens when I flick down on this. Now it gives me different controls. So if I go back, see, watch when I click down again, watch what happens. See how it switches like what's illuminated on here? That's pretty cool. And then that brings us into this screen. So you got your heads up display, which is on heads up display menu, display menu, brake coach, oil life. We can go back. And then that brings us back into this screen. So with the Grand Touring One package, it does give you guys a head-up display, which is located here. Right now, what's displayed on my head-up display, starting from the left and working our way to the right, it has your time, it has your temperature, it lets us know that we're in park, it has our digital speedometer readout, it's also letting us know that the lane keeping system is on. I got my speed limit sign, and then all the way to the right, I have my fuel range. So very good amount of information displayed on this screen. And honestly, I've said this before in other Lincoln videos, but this is my favorite head-up display system that I've experienced in pretty much any of the vehicles that I've ever driven. But anyway, back down to here. If I flip this over to the left, that will bring me into my audio screen. So I can go between my AM, FM, XM, and my Bluetooth audio. I'm gonna click back, and then I can go into my phone stuff by clicking over here to the right, and then this is what it displays on the screen. That's that, and then if I wanna bring my navigation, flick that up, and now that brings me into my navigation on screen. So pretty cool. Um, and I like how it like changes what's on here. It's kind of interesting, but it's also, you know, kind of cool at the same time. Um, and really one more thing on the steering wheel is that this is your voice activated button. So if you press that, you can speak to the vehicle. You can tell it to do something. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature. However, uh, last time I got in the aviator, like when I first ever drove an aviator, I was turning and I accidentally hit that button. However, now that I know that that button is there, I don't hit it. But you will probably, if you buy this car, you will hit that button once or twice as you're getting used to it. But once you get used to it, you will never hit that button, trust me, uh, because it did happen to me. Again, you get your steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. This is your upshift paddle. This is your downshift paddle. Working our way over to here. This does get push button start, and that is what your push button start thing looks like. Working our way to our infotainment screen. This is a 10.1 inch Sync 3 infotainment system with wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto. You guys also do get built in navigation. So let's go throughout our screen. So up on the upper left hand side, this is your home screen. So it's uh, my navigation stuff here, phone stuff and some more phone stuff. Power flow, so you can see you know, what the vehicle is doing. So right now it is idling. One thing I wanted to show you guys that I thought was pretty funny, but I'm not sure if the GoPro is gonna pick it up. Take a listen to what happens when I rev the electric motor. Listen. Ah, man, the bat or the, okay, last time I did that, the electric motor itself actually revved and it was pretty cool. But of course, when I wanted to show you guys that it didn't do it. So anyway, of course that happens. That always happens to me, but this is the time. That's the temperature. And um, we'll go back throughout the screen. These are your different shortcut buttons. You can go in between your different charge settings. So this is what charge settings look like. Let's go into our audio shortcut. So you can go in between your different sources. Let's go into our phone, phone shortcut. This is what the phone screen looks like. Let's go in between our navigation stuff. This is your navigation screen. You can go in between your different apps that is uh, what your app screen looks like and then you can go in between your different settings so you get your sound settings and etc driver assistance stuff this is what your driver assistance settings look like so here are all your different driver assistance stuff so that's one of them I'm gonna scroll down slowly so you guys can see your different driver assistance features and then I'll uh, explain those later on but this is your second setting screen this is your third setting screen. And again, like I mentioned, pressing on this button, 
will bring you into this screen. So basically all you can do on this screen is adjust the lumbar um, in or out. So if you guys had the perfect adjustment seats or whatever, then you can come over here, press that button, it'll bring you into your massaging seat functions, but this one does not have the perfect position seats. Um, and really that's kind of about it for that screen. Working our way down here, if you press on that button, this does have Active Park Assist 2.0. Active Park Assist 2.0 also comes a part of Lincoln Copilot 360 1.5 Plus. So basically the vehicle will park itself for you, which is nice if you guys don't know how to park. And then pressing on this camera button will pop up your 360 degree view camera and your forward facing camera. However, if you threw this thing into reverse, that will pop up your backup camera with your guidance lines and your 360 degree view camera system. And then just below that, pressing on this button here, this will bring you into this screen. So you can uh, either turn your auto hold on or off. Basically auto hold is a feature that if you guys are stuck in traffic, you're tired of holding your foot down on the brake, the vehicle will hold you in place with its braking system for you. I can also press this button right here and it will explain it to you guys. So basically it holds vehicle at a stop. That's how it explains it to you guys. And then you can also turn the traction control system on or off throughout this screen as well. And then you can go in between your different additional settings throughout here. But anyway, that's about it for that. We're on our way down to our transmission stuff push to go into park push to go into reverse push to go into neutral push to go into drive however with your moving gears the buttons are textured so again with the moving gears the buttons are textured the non-moving gears the buttons are smooth so just something i thought i'd point out to you guys you get some wood trim throughout here it looks very very premium you got your volume knob you got your tuning knob one thing i like is that the volume and tuning knob just both feel like very premium in and of themselves this is to lock the rear audio so now the rear audio is locked this is to switch between your different am fm sirius xm bluetooth audio USB uh, sources by the push of that button. This is your hazard button. That's what your hazards sound like. These are to skip forward or backward in between different songs uh, or radio stations. And then this is also your tuning knob. This is what your climate control stack looks like up front here. You get heated and ventilated front seats, both with three levels of adjustability. So you also do get uh, automatic driver's seat stuff. And I believe that also comes with your Grand Touring One package. So basically if it's cold outside, it will automatically turn the heated seats on for you. If it's hot outside, it will automatically turn the ventilated seats on for you. Also, if it's cold outside, it'll also turn the heated seat uh, steering wheel on for you. So that comes with the Grand Touring One package. So you do get a heated steering wheel with one level of adjustability that is what your climate control stack looks like one thing that was kind of annoying to me about the climate control stack is that let's say you have like your fan speed blasting and you want to turn the uh, climate control system off immediately you can't do that so you got to press the menu button then it pops up on the screen and then you can turn the uh, climate climate control off so there's not like a climate control off button on the climate control stack which is kind of annoying and that's something i thought i'd point out to you guys but it is what it is uh, it's really not that big of a deal to press the menu button and then turn it off but just an extra step but down in here you get a great spot you can set a phone or any like smaller miscellaneous items you get a usb c port a usb a port over here you get a great spot you can set your key fob you get two cup holders here down there you do get some ambient lighting and then right here you have a drive mode selector you do get seven drive modes with the grand touring so let's go throughout our different drive modes so i'm going to start all the way at the left with pure ev so you got pure ev <laughs> you have preserve ev you have excite which is basically your sport mode then you have conserve which is efficient driving you have normal you have slippery and you have deep conditions. I've only so far been driving around in normal mode, but that's your drive mode selector. You can also push on it to switch in between dri different drive modes. This is your electronic parking brake, so you can pull up on that. That will engage the parking brake. Now the parking brake is engaged. If you guys wanna disengage the parking brake, you have to push down on the brake, push down on that, and then the parking brake will disengage. Taking a look at our center fold down armrest. It is all leather wrapped. It's very nicely padded, and you get some stitching on that. 
opening this up you got a little divider thing right here you can set a phone if you want to and then if you guys open this thing up right here you get a 12 volt power outlet and if you guys are like you know it says it's got a wireless charging pad where's the wireless charging pad wireless charging pad is right here so you can set your phone in there i will show you guys my phone in there i have an iphone 14 pro max and it fits in there no problem so this is one of the bigger phones you can get on the market and it fits down in there again no problem and then right here you got like a spot you can set some coins uh, i know the gopro is not picking it up all that well but that's what i'm talking about there you get an led light or an exit it looks like a halogen light to me down in there to illuminate down in there at night you also get some storage space through here it is see-through storage space and it is quite a bit of storage space you can set a phone maybe even a collapsible umbrella down in there and then working our way to the dash one more time you guys can see like here all throughout there you get four hvac vents but then the backing is piano black so that is piano black trim over here you do get a lockable glove box you know with a decent amount of storage space uh, so you can fit your owner's manual which is in there now as well as some napkins some straws maybe some sausage mcmuffins um, or some snacks or something like that if that's what you want to put in there you get a frameless and auto dimming rear view mirror it looks very premium and then up top here you do get auto air refresh with the grand touring one package that is to turn the all the interior dome lights on so now all the interior dome lights are on click that again they turn back off i believe if i just touch that it's like a touch screen type of thing that will turn the driver light on or the passenger light on the panoramic roof does come standard with the grand touring so you also do get a uh, power shade this is to control the power shade this is to control the sunroof uh, itself so if i press on that that will tilt the sunroof so now you can see it's tilted if i press that again it will close and then if i push like a normal sunroof it would open up um, you know sliding backwards but i'm not going to open that up all the way uh, and then i'll show you guys once the sunroof is closed the power shade so if i press this button here the power shade will close. I'm not gonna close it all the way just for lighting's sake. You also got a great spot. You can set some sunglasses. This is where it lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. I believe this is like the interior air temperature thing for the climate control system. So if there's like the, if the automatic climate control system is on, it can regulate the temperature and the fan speed. I believe that's what that does. But then that is your Bluetooth mic pickup for your Bluetooth phone. Then you get one of those over there for the passenger. Passenger gets an Opu pandal. Driver does not get an Opu pandal. But taking a look at the driver's visor you get your universal garage door opener with three different buttons so if you guys have three different individual garage bays at your house you can open up those three different garage bays again individually with these three different buttons folding this thing down you get a little clip right here you can set money business cards or any small paper product opening this thing up you get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights and last but not least this thing does slide forward and backwards so if the sun is in an awkward position over here you can pull it back and block the sun which is very very nice and that uh that visor over there does the exact same thing there are a couple things i wanted to read off to you guys that come with the gt1 or the grand touring one package and those things include the head-up display the phone is a key the heated and ventilated front seats the heated steering wheel the heated second row outboard seats the heated wipers the auto air refresh as well as lincoln co-pilot 361.5 plus which includes front side and rear sensors adaptive cruise control with stop and go lane centering and speed sign recognition it also includes active park assist 2.0 evasive steering assist and reverse brake assist and then i'll put the elements package on screen which is also included with the grand touring one package which basically is like your auto air refresh and a bunch of those other things as well as the heated steering wheel heated seats etc but i do want to uh, pull up the window sticker so give me one second all right so now i'm going to throw the window sticker on screen you guys can take a look at everything that comes standard everything that's optioned on this particular one uh, but pretty much what I'm going to highlight are like two things. So I'm going to highlight that this does get a $55 credit for not having the hands-free lift gate as well as a $50 credit for not having the enhanced security system light. But other than that, I'm just going to highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2023 Lincoln Aviator Grand Touring is spec is $77,975. Let me know what you guys think of that price in the comment section down below. Personally, 
I think this might be the aviator to get if you guys don't want to ball out and get the black label. Reason being is that, yeah, you don't get the perfect position seats, but you pretty much get everything else. I know you don't get like the fancy looking blacked out exterior, which personally I really like, but um, you know, if I'm not trying to spend another, what, $13,000 to get the black label with the two-tone look, then I think this is plenty fine. Plus, you also do get the the hybrid system so the hybrid system gives you phenomenal fuel economy and what i saw online is that um, this does have an 18 gallon fuel tank and if you guys do get 56 miles per gallon e average you guys can potentially see over a thousand miles per tank of gas dependent on how you drive so if you're driving like a crazy you're not going to be able to see you know a thousand miles of range but you might be able to see 700 miles of range which is pretty dang good in my personal opinion so very good fuel economy if you guys want to get the black label grand touring which basically gives you guys the same electric hybrid powertrain you're looking at an additional twenty thousand dollars over the grand touring like we are in here today so you guys can decide whether it's worth it or not if you guys you know are rolling in some dough then the black label grand touring is worth it because it's you know it just it brings it up to that next level but you know if you have you no know, money but you don't want to spend an additional twenty thousand dollars to get the black label grand touring then this is plenty fine this is very very nice in and of itself but i do want to show you guys what's going on in those rear seats before we move into the driving portion of the review so i'll open up this door here and i'll show you guys what we have going on in these rear seats so Taking a look at the door panel back here, you guys can see it looks very similar to what you would find in the front. I apologize about that lawnmower right there, but you get your Revel speaker surround, you get automatic up and down windows back here, you get your unlock and your lock function. So let's say you're the mom, you're the dad, you're the owner of this vehicle, and you go into the grocery store, you leave your kid in the car, the kid can press this lock button and he can lock or she can lock the vehicle from the second row. And then once she sees you or he sees you walking back to the vehicle, they can unlock it. But all of this is leather wrapped. It's nicely padded. And then you get some good amount of miscellaneous storage space back here, as well as a spot you can set a water bottle. Taking a look at the second row seats, you guys can see they look very, very nice. They are the captain's chairs set up. So let's step into the interior and uh, let's see what this is all about. These are also reclining. So you guys can see I am reclining the seat. Not that much reclinability, but enough to where I can be very comfortable. So I am adjusted behind myself at the moment. I am five foot nine. I've got plenty of knee room. I've got plenty of leg room. And I also have plenty of headroom as well. You get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. You get a seat back pocket over there behind the passenger seat. Just keep in mind that these seat back pockets are mesh, so um, stuff may fall through. Actually, I don't know if stuff's really gonna fall through because it seems like it's pretty tightly woven mesh. But one of my favorite things that I think is really cool about the Aviator is this screen back here. And I know the GoPro's not gonna pick it up all that well, but you can go between your different seat stuff. So you do get heated and ventilated seats, both with three levels of adjustability back here. So I was wrong. So you, not only do you get heated outboard second row seats, you also get ventilated outboard second row seats. So very, very nice. You can also go into your climate stuff on screen. That is what the climate screen looks like back here. You can go in between your different air quality stuff. So right now we are uh, having good air quality. You can go between your audio stuff. So you can volume up, volume down, change the source, play or pause on a track. Uh, and then you can go between your different settings. Again, if your kids are annoying you and they're playing music you don't like and they keep messing with you, you guys can lock the rear audio from the driver's seat. You get two HVAC vents and opening this up, you get two USB-C ports and then you get a 150 watt or a 110 volt household power outlet for back here as well. Like I said, this is the captain's chairs configuration. So you do get a center fold down armrest. You get two cup holders. You get a great spot you could set a phone. I can also close the shade if I want to by pressing on this button. I can also open the shade if I want to by pressing on that button. So now the shade is opening up all the way. And then opening this up, you get two, two more USB-C ports down in here, as well as a ton of storage space down in there. By the way, these second row seats are very, very comfortable. You also got some more storage space right here in between the seat and the center console. So very good amount of storage space back here. Um, I'm very comfortable, very like the seats themselves are very comfortable. Opu panel, you got a spot you can set your dry cleaning and a dome light. Same stuff over there for the passenger side. I might not step into the second row or third row seats, but ah, I guess I might, might as well, right? 
So if I press this button, that will drop and move the second row seat forward. And then uh, you guys can see, this is about the leg room back here. You get some cup holders, you get an HVAC vent and some miscellaneous storage over there. Same thing on this side as well. Uh, but you know, obviously not as much space back here in the third row, but you know, we've talked about the exterior, we talked about the performance, and now we talked about what's going on here in the interior of the aviator. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat. All right guys, and now onto the driving portion of the review. Right now I am in pure electric mode and you guys can hear that Mustang. Um, so right now, this is just the battery that's moving us forward. So I also, if I want to, uh, I also want to see it. Like if I floor it, okay, the engine turns on. Um, so if you guys are like conservative, um, you know, with the throttle, then the engine will not turn on. Like right now, uh, I have the, uh, basically the drive mode is in pure electric mode. So right now, the battery is the only thing powering this car. However, Normally what I would do, I would probably flip it back over into um, normal mode, which we are in normal mode now, and it's still only using the battery. So right now we're probably getting, you know, pretty darn good range when it comes to our fuel economy stuff. So I apologize, number one, if this is a very long video. I did not intend this video to be that long, and I, I was watching the timer on the GoPro and I wasn't really paying attention to it until it was too late and I was like man this is gonna be a long video so I apologize if this video is too long um, but in the comments down below let me know if you guys like these long videos or if you would rather the videos be shorter because the reality is I make these videos for you guys what would you guys like to see I also really like that color on that Mustang GT and it sounds very good and it's got some nice wheels on it as well but these seats in the Grand Touring are very, very comfortable. I actually, like three weeks ago, I think, I drove a bla uh, Aviator Black Label, and that was very, very comfortable with the perfect position seats. I mean, obviously, those seats are gonna be more comfortable than the ones we have here today, but you're also spending a lot more money for those seats. So I think that these seats are plenty, plenty fine. Like, these seats themselves are super, super comfortable in and of themselves. Like, I don't feel like I need the perfect position seats, to be honest with you guys, because these seats are very comfortable. But I'm gonna floor it, and uh, let's see how. Uh, very very good acceleration and that is something that I noticed with this thing uh, is the acceleration is more than enough uh, than you guys really need and the black label that I drove actually just uh, it wasn't the grand touring black label it was just the black label with the three liter twin turbo v6 that made 400 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque and I thought that that thing had plenty of get up and go um, until you step in this thing and this thing with its 600 130 I should have moved that seat back into its position uh, before I got out anyway that's uh, too late for that now but anyway the uh, this thing's got so much get up and go like very like almost more than it is more than enough get up and go for what you really need but you know you get all that power all that get up and go but you're still getting better fuel economy um, than what you guys would get with the less power car so I think that's pretty impressive. So you get better horsepower, or I think it's actually better, yeah, it's better horsepower, a lot more torque, and you're getting better fuel economy. So you're spending also more money though with the Grand Touring, yes, over like a reserve, let's say, but you know, you also are getting way better fuel economy and you get more power. So it's like, well, what do you want? So, you know, you could put that money that you save, if you guys don't get the Grand Touring, like you get the reserve, let's say, you can save that money uh, initially, like the initial investment by not getting the Grand Touring and put that money into gas, or you can get the Grand Touring and just get very, very good fuel economy. And you also get, I believe, a tax credit for, and I don't know the exact credit that you guys would get because there are so many stipulations when it comes to the tax credit system with like hybrids and EVs and stuff like that. So I can't give you guys a definitive number, uh, but I knew I do know that this vehicle does, I believe, qualify for the tax credit because its MSRP is under eighty thousand bucks. So you are gonna qualify for a tax credit. I believe if the MSRP goes above $80,000, you do not qualify for a tax credit, but this one is under 80, so it does qualify. Also, 
I think $77,000 is a lot of money, but I believe that you do get your money's worth, uh, at least in this particular application with the Grand Touring. You know, it looks very good from the outside. You get great fuel economy, you get a ton of power. Seats are super comfortable. You get heated and ventilated second row seats in the second row. You get a pano roof, you get 360 cameras. So this thing is like fully loaded. You know what I'm saying? Like this thing has every option that you want it to have. You got adaptive cruise control, 360 camera. You get the parking sensors for the front, the rear and the side. So again, this thing is loaded up out the wazoo. Um, it's got every feature wireless charging pad that you want. Uh, it, the only thing that the aviator needs to have that no aviator has, including the black label, which honestly is kind of disappointing is a sync four system with the wireless Apple CarPlay and the wireless Android Auto. Lincoln, if anybody from Lincoln is watching this video, you guys need to incorporate the wireless Apple CarPlay and the wireless Android Auto with this system. It's 2023, I mean, literally, um, you know, $30,000 Subarus have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So you guys gotta, you know, step up your game a little bit. Give us the wireless Apple CarPlay. Give us the wireless Android Auto. Um, if that were the case, then there's really nothing that I would complain about this vehicle. I mean, it's rides so smooth. It's so quiet from the exterior perspective uh, or from the interior's perspective on the exterior, like as we're driving between the wind noise and the road noise. It's very, very quiet. The ride is very, very smooth. If you guys want an even better ride, you guys can option the $2,400 air ride suspension, um, which lowers if you guys step in or out of the vehicle. So if that's something you guys want, you know, that's an additional $2,400. And I think that may put you over the edge and you may not qualify for the tax credit because that would put this over $80,000. So just something to keep in mind. But overall, this vehicle is super nice, not only looking, but also feeling. Um, and it's just super, super comfortable, which is something that I always appreciate. You know, if you're getting a vehicle in my opinion, you want it to be comfortable, you want it to be feature packed, and feature packed, and you want it to be safe. And this thing, I believe, nails down all three of those heads. So overall, really, really enjoyed my time behind the wheel of the Aviator, just like I always do. It doesn't matter if it's the Black Label or this, they're both super, super nice. Um, so overall, really, really like this vehicle. If you guys want to buy this particular one, I'll have Thomas's information in the description box down below. But that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I said to you guys, I'm really trying to hit 10,000 subscribers and I cannot do that with your guys' help. So again, if you guys did enjoy the video, please give the video a thumbs up. Please be one of my 10,000 subscribers. I would greatly appreciate it. If there's any vehicle that you guys want to see me review, drop it in the comments down below and I will try to make it happen. But again, that's it for today's video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.